Hi, my name is Professor Silver, and in today's class, we'll break down Greninja's evolution from an eager Froki into one of Ash's most powerful Pokémon. We'll explore his drive to be the strongest, unique bond with Ash, and mind-blowing battles. This video is brought to you by Athletic Greens. During the episode Cloudy Fate, Bright Future, Anastar Gym Leader Olympia revealed that Greninja's journey to excellence started immediately after he hatched from his egg. While all the other Pokémon who lived at his pond were content to revel in merriment, Froakie rejected their frivolous ways and instead devoted himself to training. Because he refused to socialize with his brethren, he became a social pariah among his tribe, regularly came into conflict with the other water types, and often found himself their victim. Shortly after they beat him up and sent him to Nurse Joy, he learned from her that the only way to achieve true greatness was by teaming up with a trainer who would nourish his abilities. To help find that special someone, Joy sent him to live with Professor Sycamore. The professor introduced Froki to many young trainers who all desired him to be their starter, but he rejected each and every one of them as he thought them all incapable of guiding his exceptional potential. If the trainers didn't return him to the lab themselves, he left their embrace and ran off without them. At the start of Pokemon XY in the episode Kalos where dreams and adventures begin, Froakie met Ash and finally found someone he felt worthy of being his trainer. After he trailed Ash through Lumio City, observed his tenacity, and learned how much he cared for Pikachu, he made his presence known against Team Rocket and leapt to the trainer's defense. To save the city, Froakie rescued Pikachu from his own Electro Ball, frubbled Wobbuffet, and blasted off the trio with Water Pulse. As thanks for his help, Ash rushed into Sycamore for some much-needed medical attention. It was upon Ash's arrival at the lab in Lumio City Pursuit that he learned Froakie's last trainer wanted nothing to do with him and had left him all alone in the world without a friend. Despite hearing about the Pokémon's nasty habit of abandoning those around him, Ash thought his defense of Pikachu made him an incredible individual, one he would be proud to own. Upon recovering, Froakie further impressed Ash by protecting Sycamore's Garchomp from the trio and helping save her when she was outfitted with a rage-inducing collar. With mutual admiration and respect, he asked to join Ash's team at episode's end by offering his Pokeball. Later on in the series, in the episode Kalos League Passion with a Certain Flare, Sycamore revealed that Froakie likely chose Ash because he thought him the only one capable of unlocking his true power. Not knowing the future that awaited them, but happily anticipating its arrival, Ash accepted the request. Although Froakie's gesture led him and Ash to form a fast friendship, he wasn't used to working with others and failed to follow commands when Ash tried to catch Fletchling in a battle of aerial mobility. Wanting to cheer up Bonnie and retrieve her stolen berry, he ignored Ash's wish to use Pikachu, fired off his frubbles at the little bird, and let loose a vengeful water pulse. Unfortunately, his desire to help Bonnie was no match for Fletchling's speed and painful pecs. The loss damaged Froakie's self-confidence, but also helped him realize the necessity of teamwork. During the rematch, Ash led him to victory by capitalizing on his newfound willingness to accept commands, his uncanny ability to soar through the air, and his drive to never stop improving himself. Fletchling dodged many of his attacks, but the Bubble Frog won anyway as he set up a decoy, landed Bubble, dodged Razor Wind, and finished up with Water Pulse. Shortly after Ash caught Fletchling, it became a huge help in Froakie's pursuit to get ever stronger. Their practice battles in battling on thin ice and coming back into the cold not only affirmed his love of training, but also his desire to see his friends prosper in their own regards. In addition to Fletchling, Froakie also bettered himself by bonding with Pikachu, Chespin, and Venikin. He solidified his friendship with them in the bamboozling forest soon after they all got lost together. By questioning Meowth's motives, cleaning Fennekin's fur, and defending his allies from Pumpkaboo, Froakie bolstered his image as a heroic individual whose desire for justice knew no rival. Thanks to the influence of both his new friends and Ash, he never let up on his goal to reach new heights of uncharted power and did all that he could to vanquish every opponent that came his way. He frubbled Clembot's Magnemite and Magneton in Clement's Got a Secret and pounded Chespin in an appetite for battle. But his inexperience ultimately gave way to several early defeats. In the first of the losses in the episode to catch a Pokemon smuggler, a poacher's Diggersby put him to shame using strong defense, dig, double slap, and hammer arm. The battle left Froakie wanting to never lose again, but he did just that in Kindergarten Chaos. A teacher Sylveon tanked Bubble, outsmarted his decoy, pierced his heart with the tract, and claimed victory with Draining Kiss, so he left the battle totally dejected and humiliated. Fortunately, he revitalized his spirits that very same episode after he bonded with a boy named Randall, proved his strength to Sylveon, and wrecked the trio. Due to Froakie's growing power, increased confidence, and craving to shatter his limits, his potential for greatness caught the eye of the ninja Sanpei in a rush of ninja wisdom. The ninja thought Froakie slower and weaker than his frogadier, so Ash challenged him to battle. He and Froakie enthusiastically entered the field, but swiftly found themselves completely outclassed. Frogadier dodged all the initial attacks that came his way, laid down smokescreen, set up a decoy, toppled bubble, barreled through water pulse, and won out with quick attack. 
It pained Froki to lose yet another battle, but he quickly rebounded after Ash, Sampe, and Frogadier all resolved themselves to help him learn the move that beat him. They helped him supercharge his agility, run on water, and fly through the forest, but rather than master quick attack, he instead taught himself double team. The first thing he did with the new power was save his friends from a life of servitude. As a result of the rescue, Froki gained the respect of his rival, improved his relationship with Ash, and departed for Salage City with his head held high. Along the way there, he saved a Skrelp from certain doom in an undersea place to call home. Not only did his big leap during the rescue foreshadow the heroics he'd perform as a Greninja, but it also inspired Ash to formulate the Rock Tomb Climb, the strategy he used against Grant's Onyx and Tyrant. During the gym battle itself, Onyx opened with Flash Cannon, activated Rock Polish, and used Rock Tomb, but Froki climbed the rocks with Double Team, unleashed Torrential Pain, dodged Iron Tail, hopped atop the Rock Snake's head, and triumphed with Water Pulse. Unfortunately for the water type, Tyrant proved a superior opponent and easily seized victory using Draco Meteor. In the Forest Champion, Froki came back stronger than ever while helping Ash catch all Lucha. The Luchador's incredible speed made him a formidable foe, but Froki proved he would never back down no matter the challenge ahead of him. Halucha kicked through the copies and nearly prevailed with Flying Press, but Ash's ferocious ally held strong, countered the assault, and produced a double knockout with Pound. Besides redeeming his defeat to Tyrant, the tie also gave Froki the experience he needed to beat Mir Fennekin in the Cave of Mirrors and learn Cut in forging forest friendships. By learning Cut while saving Pikachu from falling debris, he reaffirmed his hero status, gained an upgraded version of Pound, and confirmed that Ash's hard work had paid off in spades. Wanting to keep the momentum Froki had labored so hard to attain, Ash doubled down on his training, partnered him with Halucha, and used him in a practice battle against Chespin and Buttleby. Despite Ash's noble intentions, the two's contrasting personalities led the match to end in total chaos. They left the field a bickering mess, but eventually learned to respect each other after they saved Ash from a wild Trevenant and mastered the combination attack, Super Flying Cut. Even though Halucha pushed Froki to be a better battler, the froggy warrior still fell to Astrid's Meowstic and Diancie in the Cocoon of Destruction and Tierno Squirtle in the Summer of Discovery. It upset Froki that Ash didn't let him make up for the losses during the showdown at the Shalor Gym, but he showed true maturity throughout the match by cheering for his allies and thwarting the trio. Froki didn't stay away from the spotlight long, as he took center stage in a stealthy challenge when he and Ash discovered that Sanpei and his recently evolved Greninja had been wrecked by a Barbarical. Soon after coming to his friend's aid, stopping Razor Shell and learning of Sanpei's mission to deliver a secret scroll, he saved Clement and teamed with Greninja in the struggle against Barbarical. The two gave Barbarical their all, but it still dodged their attacks and put the kibosh on their efforts. Following Team Rocket's disruption of the battle, Froki returned to the battle more determined than he had ever been, noticed his friends were in danger, and evolved into Frogadier to save them. Totally upstaging his mentor, he cut through Razor Shell, hit with many aerial aces, and forced his opponent's retreat. Barbarical's attacks turned out to be nothing more than a test for Sanpei by his mentor, but Frogadier's bravery during the crisis and subsequent bout with Greninja cemented him as Ash's Collosion Ace. From then on out, he provided major utility support, especially against Team Rocket. He often attacked their mechs, pummeled their Pokemon, and freed Ash from their clutches. When not fighting the trio, he also repaired roofs and adventures and running errands, made a bottle for Hoopa and Hoopa in the Clash of Ages, protected Serena and So You're Having a Bad Day, and rescued Ash from volcanoes in Legendary Photo Op. As thanks for Frogadier's endless help, Ash gifted him berries and under the pledging tree, let him play with Halucha and the frolicking find in the flowers, never stopped honing his growing power, and used him against Coomerine gym leader Ramos in the green grass types of home. Ramos' Weeping Bell dodged Water Pulse, set up Grass Knot, struck with Razor Leaf and disseminated poison, but Frogadier blocked the powder, cleared the field, and triumphed with Aerial Ace. The leader's next Pokemon, Go Go, put on the pressure as soon as it emerged from its Pokeball. To kick things off, it repelled Water Pulse, whipped through Double Team, hid within Razor Leaf, tanked Aerial Ace, recovered its energy with Horn Leech, and sapped Frogadier dry with Leech Seed. All seemed lost, but Ash's trust in the frog's abilities allowed the Pokemon to withstand Razor Leaf, sense the goat's location, land Aerial Ace, use Double Team, and win with Water Pulse. Soon after earning Ash the plant badge, Frogadier walked one step closer towards realizing his potential as the ultimate warrior by becoming the sparring partner of Sawyer's Trico. Alongside Halucha and Bagon, they fought for the first time in a fashionable battle. During the match, Frogadier saved Halucha, cut through Bullet Seed, and took home the win with Cut. At the start of their very next battle together in Rivals Today and Tomorrow, Trico evolved into Grovile. Despite the form change, however, Frogadier dodged Leaf Blade, dealt heavy injury with Aerial Ace, connected with Cut, countered Bullet Seed, dodged several strikes, and won with Water Pulse. Though he won without breaking a sweat, his quick smile to Grovile after the battle ended signified that the upstart had earned his friendship, gained his respect, and inspired him to bulk up for when they next fought. Thanks to Grovile's influence and efforts as a battle buddy and from A to Z, Frogadier had no issue against Olympia's misguided acolyte Carrie in the episode Cloudy Fate, Bright Future. 
To beat the girl's Sableye, he fired off Water Pulse, Tank Shadow Claw, stopped Power Gem, and used Aerial Ace. Before Carrie could call forth her next Pokémon, Olympia stormed onto the scene, apologized for her acolyte's rudeness, revealed to Ash that Frogadier held great potential, and communicated his early origins. Because Olympia predicted the starter would reach a height of power never seen before, Ash promised to help his friend achieve the greatness she foretold, nourish his abilities, and use him in many battles. Accordingly, during All Eyes on the Future, he used Frogadier and Talonflame against Olympia's Meowsticks. As is typical of double battles, Ash's opponents dominated the early moments of the match. The Meowsticks used Helping Hand, dodged their enemies' attacks, protected themselves with Light Screen, downed Talonflame with Dark Pulse, used Keen Eye to land Psy Shock, and did massive damage with Future Sight. Ash's team used Double Team Brave Bird and Cut to drastically reduce the Psychic type's effectiveness, but their efforts were nearly neutralized when the female Meowstic aimed Thunder Wave at Talonflame. Because Frogadier intercepted the blow, took the paralysis afforded, and then protected Talonflame from the remnants of an errant Psy Shock, the Fire Flying type was free to strike the male with Steel Wing. Talonflame did its best to save its partner when the Meowstic struck back with Dark Pulse, but the two got swept up anyway by Future Sight's destructive power. Upon gathering his wits, Frogadier and his ally dodged a bevy of attacks, tricked the Meowsticks into striking each other, and overcame Future Sight by using Pikachu's tail count to predict when the attack would next hit. To finish the battle, Frogadier threw Meowstic into Future Sight, surfed atop Talonflame, combined Cut with Flame Charge, and repelled Psyshock using Water Pulse and the power of Ash's encouragement. Following his beating of Olympia, he ventured to the ninja village in The Legend of the Ninja Hero. While there, he learned about the village's ancient Greninja hero and proved himself its successor in a festival of decisions by rescuing the village's kidnapped chief and protecting its villagers from Bisharp. When Bisharp threatened his friends, Frogadier grew mad with fury <laughs> evolved into Greninja learned Water Shuriken, tapped into Ash's essence, and activated the Bond Phenomenon for the very first time. The workings of the transformation were a mystery to both Trainer and Pokémon, but they used the boost in power and speed it afforded to absolutely wreck Bisharp when it next attacked. Even though Greninja departed the village unaware of the awesome destiny that awaited him, he spent the rest of the saga unknowingly affirming his position as the perfect inheritor to the legendary hero's power. Before we tackle the rest of Greninja's adventures, I wanted to shout out our sponsor, Athletic Greens. AG1 by Athletic Greens is a nutritional supplement that helps with immune support, energy, recovery, and focus. The all-in-one powder is perfect for fulfilling your nutritional needs, as each serving contains 75 ingredients with components including vitamins, minerals, probiotics, and a adaptogens. I've been taking AG1 for the past month and can't recommend the benefits enough. Unlike pill-based supplements, AG1 is easy to consume as all you need to do is add the powder to water. And it's incredibly tasty. <sighs> if you're ready to optimize your performance and support your immune system, click the first link in the description so that you'll get a year's supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five travel packs for free with your first purchase. And now back to Greninja's history. Evolution both magnified Greninja's power and also his propensity for heroism. As a fully evolved bruiser, he foiled the trio scheme in a cellular connection, fought fires in unlocking some respect, and did all he could against Team Flare to save Squishy in meeting at Terminus Cave. The evil organizations lie apart in Minetric caused him heavy paralysis, but he stood firm, exceeded his limits, and unintentionally triggered the Bond phenomenon. Drawing from the form's upgraded power, he broke through his paralysis, traded Water Shuriken for Shockwave, withstood Scratch, shot off Cut, defeated Lyopard with Aerial Ace, and forced Team Flare's retreat. Beyond showcasing the power of Greninja's new form, the battle also revealed its greatest weakness. To go over in detail, I'll pass it over to our guest speaker, Lumios Trainer Zack. What's up guys? If you've seen my channel, then you'll know that Greninja is not only my mascot, but also my all-time favorite Pokémon. And a huge part of that has to do with its anime appearance. As explained by Professor Sycamore, the Bond Phenomenon is a mega evolution-like transformation a Pokémon undergoes when the trust and bond between Trainer and Pokémon is at its maximum. What makes this transformation unique is that it doesn't require a Mega Stone, and not every Pokémon is capable of achieving this either. Currently, Ash's Greninja is the only modern-day Pokémon capable of doing this transformation, with the last known Pokémon being a Greninja in the Ninja Village over 300 years ago, so that should tell you how rare this transformation is. What makes the Bond Phenomenon even more special is the fact that not any random trainer can just show up and make a Pokémon achieve this power. 
It seems that the Pokemon capable of this transformation needs a specific trainer to do so. This is why as a Froakie, Greninja would constantly be returned to Professor Sycamore, because all of his previous trainers weren't the ones that could bring out his true potential. However, Froakie instantly gravitates towards Ash in his introduction, showing that these two were destined to be partners all along. It wasn't smooth sailing for Ash and Greninja though, as they had to go through some vigorous trials and training in order to fully master the transformation. At first, they would occasionally tap into the power on accident, but it wasn't until the synchronicity test, thanks to Clement's desire to analyze Greninja's power, that they truly began to train with the form. To go into those adventures in detail, I'll throw it back to the professor. Thanks, Zach. Since neither trainer nor Pokemon wanted to let the form's one drawback prevent them from achieving their dreams of greatness, they trained their hearts out against Sawyer and Sceptile in a meeting of two journeys. Though Sceptile was a pushover in its pre-evolved forms, it revealed itself as a skilled battler after it opened with Bullet Seed, dodged Cut, unsheathed Leaf Blade, used Dragon Pulse, and let off Leaf Storm. The Grass-type only lost the battle as Greninja sensed Ash's passion, activated the Bond Phenomenon, and sent it flying. The form's sudden appearance not only fascinated Sawyer, but also Mega Trainer Alon, who watched from afar. It so amazed Alon to see a Pokemon transform without a Mega Stone that he stalked Ash, saved him from Team Rocket, and challenged him to battle to test his strength. Charizard tore through Water Shuriken, evaded Cut, set Greninja ablaze, Mega Evolved, executed Dragon Claw, incinerated Double Team, countered Aerial Ace, and did critical damage with Thunder Punch, but Ash's Ace refused to yield and unknowingly activated the Bond Phenomenon. Although he delivered a swift uppercut and staved off Thunder Punch, he ultimately fell to Blast Burn as his power paled in comparison to the Mega's ferocity. Owing to the fact that Greninja and Ash wanted to one day beat their new rivals, they trained diligently in the synchronicity tests so they could bolster their teamwork and learn to control their bond. During their training, Clement equipped them with Battle Pulse monitors as he believed that the bond's activation was directly tied into the synchronization of their thought patterns, feelings, and movements. By measuring their actions and pushing them to untold limits in battle with his Luxray, the Lumios Gym Leader hoped to help them both willfully activate the form change and better understand their sharing of energy. Luxray deployed Electric Terrain, countered Cut, Wild Charged through Double Team, tanked Aerial Ace, and traded Thunderfang for Cut, but the battle unfortunately failed to produce any meaningful results. Not wanting to give up on the mastery of their bond, Ash and Greninja continued their training with Alon and Charizard. Greninja got off to a rough start as he missed Water Shuriken and took major damage from Dragon Claw, but he speedily turned things around, landed Cut, and pushed Charizard so hard that Omega evolved. Though he broke through the Dragon's Fist, Mega Charizard intercepted Cut, unleashed Flamethrower, and dealt a super effective blow with Thunder Punch. As a result of the battle's intensity, Greninja and Ash synchronized with each other and activated the bond they had so desperately sought while battling Clement. Their increased firepower gave them the strength they needed to mince Flamethrower, dodge Thunder Punch, land Aerial Ace, tank Dragon Claw, and let off Cut, but the sting from Charizard's attacks and the all-consuming power swelling within them led them to collapse in exhaustion before the battle concluded. Upon Ash's regaining of consciousness, he convinced Alon to take part in the Kalos League as he and Greninja desperately wanted to settle the score and overcome their rivals. In preparation for their showdown with Alon and Snowbell Gym Battle, Ash and Greninja worked to strengthen their link through movement mimicry and champion a research battle. Once they finished their drilling, they accepted a challenge from Kalos champion Diantha as she had spoken with Olympia, learned of their immense potential, and wanted to test the metal. At the battle's start, Diantha's Gardevoir hopped away from Greninja's attacks, did a Matrix dodge, evaded Cut, eliminated Double Team, avoided Water Shuriken, and sent the Pokémon straight into a tree. After Ash realized that their opponents communicated through eye contact, Greninja launched a comeback by obscuring their vision and landing Cut. Turning the tables on one of the world's most powerful Pokémon so strengthened Ash and Greninja's resolve that they synchronized with each other and activated the Bond Phenomenon. Ash Greninja sliced Shadow Ball, outsped Gardevoir, and did major damage with Cut, so his opponent responded with Mega Evolution, likely because her trainer believed that they would lose without it. Following Mega Gardevoir's block of Water Shuriken and Deflection of Aerial Ace, the empowered Greninja upped his speed with Double Team, broke through Reflect, batted away Shadow Ball, and redirected all his energy into his back, causing the veil of water that surrounded his body to morph into a Water Shuriken. He used the Throwing Star to obliterate Shadow Ball, but collapsed in exhaustion before he had the chance to make history and be the first of Ash's Pokémon to vanquish a champion's ace. In spite of the battle's outcome, Diantha was blown away by Ash and Greninja's passion and encouraged them to keep training as she believed Kalos' safety might one day rest on their shoulders. To honor her wishes, they honed their skills against the Scizor in a full-strength battle surprise. In order to claim victory, Greninja used Double Team, Dodge Bullet Punch, and fired off Aerial Ace. Soon after beating the Steel-type, he sought additional experience points against Sawyer's Clowitzer. Unfortunately, he entered the battle at a major disadvantage as his foe's defeat of Noivern and Halucha had shaken Ash to his core, chipped away at his convictions, and left him doubting his abilities. 
although Greninja's power alone was sufficient to beat Cloudsur, Sceptile proved a far greater threat. It matched Aerial Ace, traded Bullet Seed for Water Shuriken, put on the pressure with Leaf Blade, eliminated Double Team, backed off from Cut, and did serious damage with Leaf Storm. Greninja fought back with Aerial Ace, but Ash was so intimidated by Sawyer's increase in strength that they failed to synchronize, allowing Sceptile the window it needed to launch Leaf Storm and win with Leaf Blade. Losing to their younger and more inexperienced rivals deeply saddened Ash and Greninja, but they departed for Snowbell City with a facade of vigor as Ash believed their inability to sync was just a one-time fluke. During the gym battle with Wolfric and All Hail the Ice Battlefield, Ash's morale took another major hit as the leaders Avalug defeated both Halucha and Talonflame. Greninja spared no effort while fighting the Icy Behemoth, but his trainer's dwindling self-worth predetermined his downfall. He dodged Stone Edge, struck with Cut, fired off Aerial Ace, froze Avalug with Water Shuriken, transformed into Ash Greninja, and did major damage with another Aerial Ace. But the battle started to go south after the Iceberg Pokémon showered him with Avalanche and caused Ash massive pain by proxy. Even though Greninja soldiered onward, cut through a plethora of stones, landed a mighty blow, tanked Stone Edge, and retaliated with Aerial Ace, Avalug pushed Ash over the emotional edge with another avalanche, intercepted Cut with Ice Fang, and triumphed with Gyro Ball. Not only did losing the battle shatter what remained of Ash's confidence, but it also made him feel totally unworthy of being Greninja's trainer. As soon as Joy told Ash that Greninja would make a full recovery, he apologized to the Pokémon for failing to master their bond, and ventured off into the winding woods so that he could wallow in self-doubt. Because Greninja's personality mirrored Ash's to a T, he did the same in seeing the forest for the trees. Their respective isolation only gave way after Squishy pinpointed Greninja's location, told him that Ash was in trouble, and gave the water dark type the coordinates he needed to save the trainer from an early demise. Although it thrilled the two spiritual brothers to reunite, a gust of wind cut short their reunion as it loosened Ash's hold on Espupa, causing the bug type to fall in his stead. Knowing that joining with Ash was the only way to save the falling Pokémon, Greninja activated the bond phenomenon without a second's hesitation, flew down the mountain, and caught Spupa within his arms. As a testament to their renewed connection, Ash served as Greninja's eyes while he descended. The heroic endeavor proved a blessing in more ways than one, as it helped Ash realize that he needed to approach his relationship with Greninja as a true partnership, one where they fight together on equal footing without any form of hierarchy. Greninja agreed with his assessment and fully accepted his apology, so he resumed his role as Ash's most powerful ace and offered his Pokeball as a sign of friendship, just like he did as a Froki. Because they had developed a complete understanding of each other's thoughts, feelings, and desires, they never had another issue with the Bond phenomenon. In a real icebreaker, they proved that all their troubles were long behind them while rematching Wolfric and fighting his Obama Snow. To establish an early lead, he delivered a beatdown with Aerial Ace, a clobbering with Water Shuriken, and a shredding of Energy Ball with Cut. Though Obama Snow tried to gain the upper hand using the Battlefield Tail and its trusty wood hammer, Greninja blocked the attack and swiftly responded by transforming into his ultimate form. As proof that his bond with Ash had truly skyrocketed him to a power level never seen before, Ash Greninja led off Aerial Ice, tore through Woodhammer, landed Cut, and sowed Mayhem with Water Shuriken. The unrivaled teamwork impressed Wolfric, so he revealed himself a Keystone Holder, and Mega evolved to Snow. The Mega rained down Ice Shard, stared down Double Team, countered Aerial Ace, upped the intensity, and froze Cut's blades with Ice Punch. But our hero of legend took advantage of the bad situation, threw the swords onto the ground, used them as Ice Skates, evaded Woodhammer, glided through Ice Shard, leapt into the air, shot off Water Shuriken, and won the battle with a deadly Aerial Ace. By finishing off Wolfric, Greninja both earned Ash the Iceberg Badge and qualified him for the Kalos League. As preparation for the League, he battled a Mega Army in Volcanion and the Mechanical Marvel. During the conflict, he rode atop Noivern, cut a Salamence, became Ash Greninja, and hit a Mega Pidgeot. When it came time for the League and a League of his own, Ash and Greninja became the talk of the tournament as their unique transformation and mythological strength took the region's spectators by storm. Opposite Titus' Altaria in the first round, he tanked Dragon Pulse, dodged Draco Meteor, and won with the single Water Shuriken, so the crowd erupted in applause and made Ash the competitor to watch. In a riveting rivalry, Greninja followed up his incredible win by fighting his old rival Sceptile in the League's semifinals. Not only did the battle offer him and Ash a chance to redeem their previous loss, but it also offered them the opportunity to settle their rivalry with Sawyer and Sceptile once and for all. Sceptile dominated the battle's first half as it tore through Water Shuriken, overcame Double Team, and kept Cut at bay, but Greninja proved he was no pushover soon after activating the Bond Phenomenon. Even though Sceptile matched his intensity by Mega Evolving, Ash Greninja ran through Frenzy Plant, sliced the attack's vines, shot off Water Shuriken, and landed a bevy of blows with Aerial Ace. 
Mega Sceptile retaliated with Leaf Storm, matched cut strike for strike with Leaf Blade, unleashed major carnage with Leaf Storm, and tried to win with Frenzy Plan. But Ash Greninja ran all through the vines, trusted in Ash to guide his movements, cut through the obstacles that laid ahead of him, created an army of speed clones, and won out with a water shuriken so mighty that it absolutely obliterated both Leaf Storm and Mega Sceptile alike. Thereafter, he and Ash advanced to the League Finals, where they set their sights on Alon and Charizard and down to the fiery finish. As a warm-up for Alon's Charizard, Greninja first beat his Bisharp. Thanks to Gudra's lasting rain dance, he evaded Iron Head and seized victory with Water Shuriken. Although Charizard had bested him in all their previous battles, Greninja still made every effort to leave the arena the victor and distinguish himself as the strongest Pokémon Kalos had ever seen. Run! Because he dodged Flamethrower, landed a killer blow with Cut, and transformed into Ash Greninja, Charizard mimicked his ferociousness and massively upgraded his power by Mega Evolving into a Draconian powerhouse. Finally fighting on equal footing with his rival, Ash Greninja launched an all-out offensive with Double Team. Mega Charizard incinerated the army of Speed Clones, countered Water Shuriken, overcame Aerial Ace, and launched a relentless assault with Flamethrower, but Ash Greninja deflected the flames, blocked Blast Burn, and caused major injuries with Aerial Ace. Even though Mega Charizard then retaliated with Dragon Claw, countered Cut, met Ash Greninja hit for hit with Dragon Claw, and unleashed a volley of Thunder Punches, Ash Greninja blocked each and every blast. As their final acts of the battle, Ash Greninja and Mega Charizard respectively exchanged the world's strongest water shuriken for the planet's deadliest blast burn. Unfortunately for Ash Greninja, when the dust settled from the attack's collision, he was left too exhausted to continue fighting and fell in defeat, officially making Alon Kalos' league champion. Despite ending the league as runners-up, Greninja and Ash accepted defeat with grace and honor. They didn't get a chance to rest after the league, as soon after Alon got his trophy, Lysander unleashed Z2 on the citizens of Lumio City, kidnapped them in the towering takeover, and plotted to use their bond phenomenon for evil purposes. Rather than let Lysander use their bond to bolster his nefarious plans for the future of humanity, our heroes instead used it to free themselves in the episode Coming Apart at the Dreams. Lysander tried to recapture them, but his attempt was entirely unsuccessful as Alon turned on his boss, freed the rest of Ash's team with Charizard, and spurned them all into battle against Lysander's Pokémon. Though Pyroar and Mega Gyarados were powerful foes, Greninja and his friends were far stronger. Once Greninja led them to victory in rocking Kalos defenses, he and Ash redirected their efforts towards stopping the giant rock from destroying the world and freeing the kidnapped Chespi from its crystal core. Following an all-out assault alongside many champions and gym leaders, they accomplished those two goals in forming a more perfect union by flying into battle, breaking apart the rock, and obliterating Lysander. Shortly after Greninja proved himself Kalos' greatest hero and became famed all throughout the region for his legendary power, he took a break from fighting so that he could receive a medal for his heroism in battling with a clean slate and celebrated his triumphs in the first day of the rest of your life. His worries didn't stay gone long, however, as he was called back into action in facing the needs of the many, when the gang learned that the roots wrought by the giant rock still plagued Kalos, threatened all those who lived there, and were in danger of being manipulated by Team Flair Zerosic. In order to stop the scientists from following in Lysander's footsteps, Ash Greninja chased after him when he stole Squishy, snuck underneath a truck, telepathically guided Ash to his location, saved the trainer from a nasty fall, and wrecked all the madman's Pokémon that stood in his way. Upon beating Zerosic and ending his plans for Neo Team Flare, Greninja accepted Squishy's request to remain behind in Kalos rather than return with Ash to Kanto, as the Zygarde Corps requested he help eliminate all the roots that were left behind. Greninja was chosen not only for his incredible strength, but also for his unique ability to sense the location of all the roots that spread negative energy throughout the region. It pained Ash to bid farewell to one of his closest friends, but he did so anyway as he knew that Greninja had found his purpose in life and that his fate was to save others rather than sit dormant in Oak's lab. You'll help Kalos and the world! Before parting ways, Ash and Greninja shook hands, hugged tenderly, and promised that they'd always be friends no matter the distance between them. Greninja. Despite the sorrow-filled goodbye, Greninja was shown to have fully accepted his new position as Kalos' savior until we compete again. While we await the day that Greninja finally rejoins Ash's ranks, let's review his epic battle record. Throughout the series, Greninja won 28 times. Greninja's most notable victories include Ramos's Go Goat, Olympia's Meowstix, Wolfric's Mega Abomasnow, Titus's Altaria, Sawyer's Mega Sceptile, Alon's Bisharp, and Lysander's Mega Gyarados. Additionally, he also lost 11 times. His most harrowing losses were to Sawyer's Sceptile, Wolfric's Avalug, and Alon's Mega Charizard. His one and only tie was with Ash's Halucha.
Over the course of the series, Greninja used Pound, Bubble, Water Pulse, Double Team, Cut, Aerial Ace, and Water Shuriken. It goes without saying that Greninja is the MVP of the Pokemon anime. Alongside Pikachu, Charizard, and Infernape, he's Ash's most steadfast companion and trusted warrior. What I love most about his narrative journey is that his zest for battle, drive for perfection, and heroic endeavors all forced Ash to level up himself and confront his shortcomings as a trainer. Given Greninja's unrivaled popularity as a character, I highly suspect we'll soon see his return in either the Masters 8 or whatever final battle Ash partakes in with his strongest fighters. And with that, class is adjourned. I want to extend a special thanks to both Athletic Greens and the channel's patrons for their support of the channel. If you'd like to watch class early, have your name appear on screen, and get access to other exclusive perks, make sure to sign up for Patreon via the link in the description. I also want to give a huge shout out to Lumio Trainer Zach. If you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe to his channel for more awesome Pokemon content. For other ways to earn extra credit, make sure to like this video, comment your thoughts, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell so you're never late to class. Until next time, catch you later.